Hey, thanks for tuning in on your favorite podcast listening app. One of my favorites is Spreaker, along with Apple, Google, and even Spotify. So glad you learned from the Aftermarket's premier podcast. Carm Capriato here, the Automotive Aftermarket Podcast Guy. Hey, two extremely qualified panelists are here in this Town Hall Academy on selling your business the first steps. You're going to find out about an interesting concept of building a perpetual business. Now, that means it outlasts you. In essence, you prepare for selling your business the day you open it. Taking the stress of the process of preparing your business for sale someday in the future off the table. I'm with Bob Ward and David Justice. The key talking points for this episode are already done for you. Find them and my guests' bios at remarkableresults.biz slash 183. These key talking points will make for a great planning agenda. Hey, note about Shopware and Shop Marketing Pros who are important partners to the Academy. It's as easy as one, two, three. Shopware's shop management system allows customers to, number one, review, two, approve, and three, pay for repairs all in one place. Keep your staff and your customers safe while maintaining profits and keeping your customers happy. Learn more at GetShopware.com. Happy, happy customers. Hey, does your social media truly represent your shop or is it just plain vanilla generic? Well, it doesn't have to be that way. The experts at Shop Marketing Pros listen and then they create social content that connects you to your community. And that's what you want on the web at shopmarketingpros.com. It is evident each week, I hope you see it, how much I love to podcast. You can watch this show's video on my YouTube channel or right on the show notes page on the website. And also, start finding more videos for the Remarkable Results Radio podcasts. They're not buying used lifts and a computer system and some desks. They're buying the cash flow. So the cash flow has to be able to be proven. Financial statements must be part of the equation. Hey, more like that in a minute. Are you staying safe and healthy? Masks, don't forget your masks. Do all you can for yourself and your customers and your family to navigate through this pandemic. If you want to be a stronger member of the podcast tribe, please subscribe to my email list. It's free and you'll be the first to know of all new episodes and the ongoings here at the Aftermarket's Premier Podcast, whose intentions are to help all ships rise. And if a person can have too much fun and be on a live show on the internet, well, you've got to tune in and watch Tom Ham and me on the live Aftermarket Weekly show on Tuesdays at noon Eastern Time. Go to aftermarketweekly.com to watch all the archived shows and to partake in the content we bring you each and every week that includes a shop tour. In this academy, I'm with coaching consultant Bob Ward from Warden LLC and perpetualbusiness.co and David Justice, coach with Repair Shop of Tomorrow. David sold his three shops and he now supports shop owners to build their legacy. Now, there's so much to learn about selling or succeeding your business. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. 12 noon East Coast time. Carm Capriato, Town Hall Academy, week 183. Selling your business. What are the first steps I need to take? Is that why you tuned in? Hmm. So you need to figure out what to do with this glorious business that you've been working and busting your hump with for the last 30 years. Uh, and, you know, you, you feed all the people that work for you. And the ironic thing is, is that, uh, you know, I, I've recently had a phone call from a business owner, friend I haven't seen in five years. I said, listen, I got to sell my business. What do I do? Of course, there's a ton of business coaches out there that can help, but I believe that's one of the dilemmas that we're being faced with. Uh, I recently saw a survey that uh, I think was north of 60% of the owners that are 59 years or older want to sell their business. And, uh, you know, and they haven't made one dime's worth of planning. And that's what we're here to do. We've done shows on this before. It's a little different twist, I think, with this one, but it's important that we talk about it. With me is Bob Ward from Warden LLC from the company perpetualbusiness.co. And that's the key, why, why Bob is here, because he's got one very, very powerful and strong message for you. David Justice is here, uh, coach repair shop of tomorrow, and you sold three shops. I did, yeah, back in 2016. It was quite an experience, and um, it was something that I prepared to go through um, and very thankful. 
As I said to my friend, I said, well, how's your financial statements? And you know what he said to me? What financial statements? I said, uh, you know, what kind of expenses are thrown into the business that are personally goes a ton? I says, are you prepared to take that out so that the new owner can see how it's normalized? Man, that's an awful lot of work. (laughs) So the point is that everybody wants to sell, but they have not done the preparation or the planning to get to that point. So we're here to talk about some first steps. David, let's start out with, uh, you know, a little bit of your background as far as you selling. Take us back to the time you were preparing to sell your business. In early 2016, I was actually looking to purchase a four-store, and uh, we'd built the last two ground up. Um, and I got contacted by a big box, and they said they really wanted to uh, talk to me about purchasing the businesses. I had previously gone to a business broker and had my businesses evaluated just to see where I was. We were on a steady, perpetual upward hill climb in our store. So basically, I knew what it was worth. I knew what I wanted. I explained that to the big box. They said they were not willing to do that at the time. And I said, okay, I'm um, you know, moving forward with our four store. A month later, they came back and, and basically made me an offer that uh, was right what I asked for. And that's how it moved forward. But for me, I own the properties. So it wasn't just the sale of the business. It was the long-term lease that I acquired. With them, it was only five years, and I told them I wouldn't sign that. I got a 15-year guaranteed. Property is always nice to have. I know there's an awful lot of young shop owners that have worked very hard to buy the property, Bob, and to make that part of uh, their assets so that in the, in the long term, it has value on a sale. Now, what I love about Bob and the reason that he's here You have one of the bestest quotes that I have ever known. You plan to sell your... I'm going to say it for you because I love it so much. I'm going to give you homage to this. And Bob says, you plan to sell your business on the day you open it. Yes. We all know we're going to sell our business. There is no dispute. We're either going to sell it in a planned sale where we get to realize the value and, and we're happily retiring or we're going to sell it through a liquidation because we died without a plan. But the business will be sold. So the very first step is to make sure that in the event of a tragedy, that business will continue. That's a business continuity plan in its basic form. Ultimately, you want to build what I call a perpetual business, meaning it will always survive the departure of the owner. Meaning today, the the listeners today, Consider if you left today and never came back, would your business operate at least as successfully as it does today without you? When you can answer that question, yes, you're good to go. You have the choice and the terms to leave your business. You know, David, I don't know if you you coach your your clients that they, you know, need to get up and out of the daily grind, become the CEO, and ultimately try to work the business a couple of days a week. That's a whole Bob's philosophy. I don't think you're ever in a, in, in a bad position when you, can, when you can lead from that position as far as selling or succeeding your business. I can't agree more. Bob's hit it right on the head. Um, in my case, again, I was doing seminars with Napa. So my three stores did about five and a half million. And um, I was gone 20 to 26 weeks out of the year. We had a system operation procedure in place. I took myself out of it, and we call them job blocks, where we had people that were responsible for these portions of the business. And, you know, whether it being a technician, a service advisor, a general manager, so on and so forth. But when you put those in place, it allows our, our clients, myself, to step out of the business and become the business owner, not someone that works in their business. And I think Bob... Bob will talk about that. David, you just you just said it very well. It's your people. Your people make your business. You develop your people. You lock them in. I often use the term golden handcuffs for that. The people are what makes the business. And when you've done a great job like you were just describing, creating a business that does not need you there, you were able to do what you wanted when you wanted on your terms. Well, thank you. And and you know, we always tried to ask people to champion our processes. And then what we would do is we would give them the why. And the why is, why does it make sense 
for you to go ahead and champion these processes. If I'm a service advisor or what have you, if I'm sold on, uh, paid on gross and net, it's about those sales, selling it for the right amount of money. If I'm a technician and I'm paid on billed hours, it's about that quality inspection so I can set my service advisor up for a quality presentation. And when we put that together, that's the why for everybody to build the team. And then, and then I'll bet you put it in a standard operating procedure, put it in your own playbook. So no matter who follows you can replicate what you did. That's exactly what we call it, Bob. Playbook. That's exactly it. Good. It's as easy as one, two, three. Shopware's shop management system allows customers to review, approve, and pay for repairs all in one place. Now, one, your customer views their outstanding balance. Number two, they are prompted to submit payment directly through their invoice. And three, Shopware's secure portal facilitates payments right there without having to open another browser or remember another password. It's really that simple. Shopware is your complete solution for contactless service. Let remote pay work for you and improve your customer experience. Get started today. Visit GetShopware.com for more information and to request a demo. Hey, Carm here. Are your competitors ranking higher than you in search? Is your marketing company using plain vanilla recycled content? And does your marketing look like every other shop's and you're not even sure it's working? Powerful, effective marketing is not cookie cutter. It should showcase all of the things that are unique about your business. Don't you think you deserve better results? It's time to make a change. Our good friends at Shop Marketing Pros are past shop owners and industry veterans. They get it. Their process is pretty simple. Listen, create, and do. They spend time getting to know you and create a unique marketing message and then do the heavy lifting for you so you can do what you do best, run a shop and fix cars. Do yourself a favor. Give your shop the top-notch marketing it deserves. Schedule a call today on the web at shopmarketingpros.com. That's shopmarketingpros.com. Don't wait. Do it now. An example of the discussion that I had over coffee with my friend, he says, yeah, I've got this great opportunity for a shop owner that I know he's, he's about five miles away and none of this will matter to him. My financials won't matter. He just wants my business. He just wants my property. And he says, I really don't need to prepare for any of that. And I said, so he's, he's a viable candidate. I said to him, then you're not going to get anything for your business because you can't prove it's worth anything. And, and I think the, I think the lazy man's way is I know John down the road, he knows I've got a decent business here. He'll, he'll pay me my million dollars. I mean, that's the, that's the joke. I, you know, I'll get a million dollars for my business. Your opinion on that? It's not well known, but is a fact that 85% of small businesses in, in all fields, 85% do not get sold. There is no buyer. Mm. They ultimately close and liquidate. And if you think about it, just in this industry, in the auto repair, how many people out there are of an age that could be the next business owner, have any money to speak of for a meaningful down, want to be in the auto business rather than some other business, want to be in the town in which your business is located and have the skill sets to be able to do it. That's why 85% don't get sold. So the best thing and where I focus, and, and David has done this himself, is you build your team. The people are the company and your buyer is likely already working for you. I agree with everything he said. Um, I have a, a situation on the other side where I have a client of mine that's getting ready to purchase a business and it's in total distress from the financial standpoint, the financials. They handed us a P&L. I would <laughs> say it's almost fraudulent. Yeah, it, it was that kind of bad. So with that, I told them. We can't move forward. We need documentation. We need to see this. We need to see these questions. They went to the bank, and the banker told them the same thing. Yeah. You can't loan money on this. So it's important, those financials. When you get to the valuation part, what is a buyer willing to pay and what will a seller accept? 
the buyer is is more important. You got to have the buyer and someone willing to buy the business and without proof of that cash flow. And that's what they're buying. They're not buying used lifts and a computer system and some desks. They're buying the cash flow. So the cash flow has to be able to be proven. Financial statements must be part of the equation. So before we were on the air, Bob mentioned that uh, he knows a friend of mine, Joe Savart. Well, we were also on the NAP National Board with a gentleman named um, Gary Plummer. And Gary Plummer is like one of my heroes because Gary Plummer in 2012 said, in seven years, I'm going to have my business sold. And on September 23rd or whatever it was, I'm going to be sitting on a beach in Hawaii. Gosh darn it. If he didn't put it together with some key employees, as Bob's talking about, put that together in a seven-year plan, I bet you it worked for both of them in an amazing way. It is. So and it's that planning. Two key employees, and he uh, developed them. They had the interest, and, and there wasn't a bunch of money there. But given a buyer with skills, you can solve for the financing. There's multiple creative ways to get it done, but you got to have a buyer. Carm, you remember one of my clients, Corey Uvalde, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he was a technician working for the owner, and they're both fantastic guys. The owner's Pat Theobald, fantastic man. They came to an agreement, and over time, Corey bought a percentage of the business. The next year bought some more and some more. Ella, like uh, uh, Gary Plummer did, but at the end of the day, now Corey's taken that from a million to two million. Pat Theobald has, a, a, I believe, a great, uh, a fantastic retirement plan. And here's a 33-year-old young man following system operation procedures and just killing it. You know, it worked out great for both of them. I'd like to... to- Pick up a little bit on the, the valuation point that we've all alluded to, but didn't quite get to the details you talked, Carm, about normalizing a financial statement. For those listening, remember it's cash flow, and then there's some assets people are buying, but they're really buying the cash flow in a multiple of that. So you've got to first define that cash flow. And the basic formula is you start with net profit, you add back depreciation, interest, amortization, your personal expenses, Carm, that you talked about, whether it's a car, cell phones, landscaping, whatever you're charging to the business you can get away with. You add all of that back in, normalize lease payments. If you're overpaying, underpaying on your lease, same with the owner's salary. An owner's salary might be 100000 when they're really an absentee owner and you don't have to hire the replacements. You get everything normalized to true, pure cash flow that you or I or David would be acquiring if we're buying that business. And then you assign a multiple, and I'll make that really easy too. I put the multiple based on the confidence that cash flow will continue when the owner goes away. So to David's point earlier, if you've got employees that have not been with you long, you know, a couple of years here or there versus long-term employees, if I buy the business, what's the likelihood those employees are going to stay? They're going to be able to keep that cash flow going. It would be low. But if I've got 15, 20 year employees, my confidence is high and hence the multiple would be higher. David, what do you think about what I just said? I, I think you hit it right on the head, Bob. And in my case, again, I had many people that worked for me for years. Um, they were quality professionals. As you said, the people make the business. I could never be sitting in the position I'm sitting in now if it wasn't for some fast, fantastic, talented people that I worked with. But here's what I did. I went to Big Box and I said, I need in writing that these folks are going to have as much or more in their salary, as much or more hospitalization, as much or more in vacation, so on and so forth, 401k. When I explained exactly where I was in the business and what was going to transpire, I think everybody felt much better about it, but I could never sell my business without making sure my people were taken care of. It just, it, it just couldn't happen. Well, it's because they took care of you. Absolutely. And I'm still really close friends with a lot of them. Well, again, you hit it on the head. It's it's the people. When you get professionals and you get talent and then you build those system operation and procedures and they champion your processes, the business starts to zoom. Guys, would you ever see that a deal breaker is the fact that you're you're forcing your team to be employed there? What if they had a, a management team they wanted to bring in themselves? Would that be a deal breaker? I'd have to sit down and look at it, but I can say this. If one of my quality people were not employed, as many people as Bob knows or I know, 
I guarantee you they had a job immediately. Absolutely. And, and any buyer, whether it's a, a big box operation, and that's pretty rare in the auto repair industry to be buying single point, uh, particularly rural type operations. That's, that's really rare. But for them to say, we want to replace something that's working really well, not likely going to happen. And if I was wanting to buy your business, Carmen, I'd even work for you. I just wanted to buy it. If you've got something that's working and your people are doing it without you, and I know sitting here in Seattle, I can buy your business in Peoria, Illinois, and not have to go there, I'm not going to replace anybody. I'm buying that cash flow, and I'm going to be an absentee owner, and I'm going to pay you well for it. In our case, if I can, Big Box came in, and they wanted to see how we were running our stores to do the numbers. We shared with them our DVI. We shared with them our inspections. We shared with them our playbook system operation or procedure. And they were stunned at how far ahead we were than other folk. But what it comes down to is, is getting the education. Carm, doing the things that you do for the industry. I mean, this is what makes the difference. If people will listen and implement, they can get there. So here I am listening to this, loving it saying, oh God, where do I start? When do I start? I'm 59 years old. I need to start doing a few things right, uh, different or better, so that I could get to this point, Bob, and, and the perpetual perpetualness of my business so that it, it's easier for me. Any words of advice on how to get started? Let me make this actionable when the call ends today. We all agree we need to have accurate financial data. That just should go without saying, but as David has experienced with me, like me, probably half of small businesses don't have anything that's useful whatsoever. And another 35% have something, but they don't really use them. Get the financial statements in order, have them be accurate. That's a foundation point. But the real task today is to consider who is going to buy the operation? Remember, 85% don't get sold. Okay, you don't want to be in the 85%. You want to be in the 15 So where's your buyer going to come from? An outside buyer, like a big box operation, franchisor, that's rare. It happens, but it's rare. What happens most of the time and is most successful is your buyer already works for you, one or more. So have a, what I call the essential conversation. I do it with everybody in your operations. It goes like this, really simple. I'm preparing for the continuity of my business. I know I'm going to leave someday in a box or otherwise. I want to make sure that the business is still here and you still have an opportunity to take care of your family. Tell me what's most important to you in your career. Stop. Find out what's most important to them in their career so they can help you develop them and possibly they're going to say, what's most important to me, I want to own my own business. I'd like to own this business one day. If they don't say that, that would be the only follow-up. Have you considered being a business owner? And then you're done with that conversation. You've got information. You say, thank you for sharing that. I'm going to take your thoughts under consideration as I develop my plans, and we'll talk more. Now you know where all of your people stand with what's most important in their careers and possibly one or more wants to be a business owner. What a great place to start. And you can have that all done by next week. I think that's exactly how you start the conversation. I believe that's exactly what happened with Pat and Corey. Is Corey and Pat talked and Corey had a desire to be a business owner. He had that burning desire and, and they put it together in a smart plan, just as Gary Plummer did. They, they worked the plan, and they both got at the end where they needed to be for each of them and their families. You know, there's so much, so many more, but Ron Hagen did it. Gary Plummer did it. Joe Seifert did it. Uh, of course, Corey bought it as an internal candidate. What's so interesting when you brought up Gary, I'm doing... A town hall academy this is going back i'm going to guess three years and gary just recently closed the deal three or four days later him and his wife are at cabo and he's on with me from cabo com- making the commitment because he wasn't sure when the business was going to close we had already booked booked the town hall so that's exactly what david is speaking to 
an internal candidate, Bob, you say 85% of businesses don't get sold. What's the percentage of businesses that get sold with internal candidates? Any idea? I don't have specific statistics there, but I would think that I'm darn close to about three quarters would be sold to somebody who's already there. They know the business. They've been there 5, 10, 15, 20 years. They understand the procedures. They know how it runs. They have the relationship with your other employees. They have the relationships with the customers, with the vendors. It's a natural transition to have somebody that's been working alongside you for many years ease you out very gently and you get uh, the value that you built over those years and the person who's put in all that effort to make David a successful seller now realizes the dream of business ownership that he helped David be successful. David's allowing his key employee now to realize that same dream. If you've got the people and you used someone used the word passion, I think it was David, that's critical. Business owners have a passion. No matter what, they're going to make it happen. You got that kind of person, you can work out the valuation, you can work out the financing, you can work out the legal details, but you got to have the buyer with the passion to take it to the next step. Uh, if you do take a big box or whatever and they drop a, a bunch of money on you, e immediately what happens tax purposes? You know, you know that. Yeah, there's no so, pay. <laughs> when you have an internal candidate uh -huh. that's passionate and wants to buy that and they buy a percentage of it, so they have skin in the game and then they buy a percentage and a percentage, that owner, maybe it's a seven-year plan, that owner can take his salary for seven years yeah. and then get paid on the end. Yes. And the tax Tax ramifications are not nearly as that's also hit. so true we, that's the the finer points but probably most of the listeners right now are wondering how am i going to leave my business so i start i look for an internal candidate bob you say three quarters is potentially the opportunity if you look for it and you build it um okay i sat down i'm looking at a seven-year plan oh, my processes are weak. How am I going to help this person take a business off of my back or even if I hold paper or whatever, however it works, we have to improve our processes, our training, our commitment. Would you even consider saying, listen, you're starting to be coached. I'm going to hire a coach and, and I want you to start getting the business acumen that it takes to, to learn to become the CEO of the business. And oh, by the way, I'm going to keep doing the marketing, but soon you're going to have to start doing it because we need to make sure that the top line continues to generate. And so these are all points we need to talk about. My favorite quote from Harvey Firestone about this very topic, he said, and I use this in all of my classes and, and client meetings and such, the quote is, it's the growth and development of people that is the highest calling of leadership. And I use a, a, parenting, a parenting metaphor with that, too. You could change the words. Anybody who has children out there, you could change it to say, it's the growth and development of our children that's the highest calling of being a parent. We want our kids to be able to live independent of us as parents. We want our business to live independent of us. So you can take all of these steps and, and handle development. You can handle education. You can handle the money. You got to have the person first. And then if, if it's a seven-year plan, you've got plenty of time to develop. But most of that development would happen in the first one or two years once you're in a defined agreement. It's not a difficult thing to do. It just requires starting and then working each step in logical, comfortable order. So if I can, my clients are all going to roll over. But uh, my father told me something a long time ago, and this is when I played baseball, but it worked very well towards business. He said, what you do today takes care of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you put the work in today, 
and you will harvest tomorrow. So people have to get started. You can start tomorrow. There's a ton of fantastic business coaches, such as yourself, Bob, and, and so many others. But you have to find somebody you're comfortable with. But get the education to really start implementing these things so you can get there. Pat Theobald called me and said, will you come down and talk with me and Corey? And that's how our relationship started. I knew Pat previously, but he said, and Corey said to me, will you mentor me through this? Absolutely. But you want to talk about passion. This guy grabs a bulls by the horn and he's getting right through it and uh, implements like nobody's business. And when you get people like that, that want to put it together, mm-hmm. you, It'll you, happen. you find success. You know, what you focus on happens. So creativity, I'm listening and I'm, I'm saying, oh my God, all of this makes sense. I, I like where we're going with this thing. I'm learning so much, but how does this, I can sell to an internal candidate and do I have to hold a paper? Can he get SBA? Will the bank stand behind him? So the creativity and working ownership over a term, can we talk about that? I'm about to answer Carm's comment, but I have a great resource as a next best step on perpetualbusiness.co the shop page is a video it's 145 dollars the best first step you could make that will explain in more detail what i'm going to give you just a hint of now so there's only four ways to get the business paid for the person already has the money they write a check not likely they can go to the bank and they've got collateral to be able to borrow a million dollars thereabouts not likely The owner can carry the paper. I don't recommend that, carrying 100% of the paper. I want some skin in the game. I want proof of concept. They can get it done. But it's an option, but I don't recommend that. So number four is how do we get creative? And it's a, a form of what David alluded to. It's a little too much to go in in detail because it takes some time to go through it. But picture that your buyer is earning credits, equity credits, towards the purchase over time. So they are earning the down payment, say over seven years, and you're spending less time in the business, they're running it more and more and more, and maybe in a seven year plan after year two, you're basically gone. The owner's making everything they're making now. Nothing changes there, but you're allowing your buyer to earn some credit towards that down payment. So when you get to the end of seven years, now you sell the business and They either have the money, can borrow the money, you carry the paper because they're only buying roughly half, say, because they earned the other half, or you just extend it to eight years or nine years. But ultimately, it gets paid for as long as you have the person who can get the job done. Bob, that's really well said. We've talked about Profit First before, the silos. Love that book. I gave it to every one of my clients. You build another silo and start working it. And that goes to Bob's point of exactly what you start to put together. And then, again, that purchase as over time. Um, One of the things that we've talked about is possibly having um, life insurance policies on either of each other in case something was to go really wrong, unfortunately. Bob makes a great point. Gary Plimmer was a great example, I believe, where he, he probably had to extend it one more year in order for that equity to build up in the owner's base. I, I don't know. And again, I think a while back, guys, you can confirm or deny. Someone was telling me that the SB, SBC or, or, or a bank would, it would look at 20% equity as something they could loan against. The SBA is a backstop to a conventional bank, collateral, credit, cash flow, all fits into the equation. But the the rule of thumb is hard assets can be used as collateral up to about 90% of the hard assets. So goodwill, the blue sky, that cash flow value is, is not a lendable asset. It's important. It's integral to the process, but you got to have the hard assets that a bank can go after (laughs) <laughs> should something go wrong. Right. But you know, that's where those financials come into place that you talked about. Um, again, I'll go back to a client I have now that's looking to purchase um, this business. Uh, go in front of a banker and bring a financial statement that's a, a wreck. They're, they're not loaning anything on it. I mean, no, it, no, no. pass, go. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you need that as a seller as well as the buyer. Brian uh, Winograd says, I made my buyers. 
Just like grow your own techs, right? I made my buyers. With everything that you guys have said here today, Brian, thank you for that. That could be, you know, the calling card for this episode. You know, uh, uh, what am I going to do? Well, look in house. Yep. And if you don't have somebody there now, go get one. And, and they're going to be your next general manager, your next service writer, your next lead tech. In fact, when you hire anybody, I always want to know what's most important in your career and your family. And what's your ultimate goal? I'd love to hire somebody as a service writer. And one of the first things they said is, for me to come work for you as a service writer, I want to know I've got an opportunity to buy your business one day because that's my ultimate goal. They're there. There's people with passion and they're trying to figure out on the other side of this conversation. You know, they're not listening to this, but there's people out there with great passion like the owners listening had to get where they are today, but they don't know how to buy a business because they don't have any money. Let's help those. Let's find those people of passion and make your own buyer. I love this. This was succinct and it was tight and it was very powerful. Great, great messaging. We could go on for an hour, but I think we really put a great bow on this one. David Justice, coach with Repair Shop of Tomorrow, sold a couple of shops and will help you tomorrow sell your business. And of course, Bob Ward's here, Warren LLC and perpetualbusiness.co, coaching consultant and um, a guy who's been on, I think you've been on the show three times before, David, you've been on a lot. So go to the website, type in either David Justice or Bob Ward, listen to more of the stuff we've done together. I'll give you a, a last word, David. I just want to say thanks for all you do. Again, bringing the education. Bob, as, as what you do, thank you for the industry. I mean, this is what really matters. I do have one solemn thing I want to mention is I lost a client uh, yesterday. One of the kindest, best friends, man, business owner, Mr. Norm Prestine. So um, I just want everybody to pray for his family. And thank you very much. Thanks, man. Our prayers are out there. Thank you. Bob? Last word start don't don't delay you can have that essential conversation with your employees starting tomorrow and if you want a little extra guidance just go to my website perpetualbusiness.co there's some text on there that explains the process there's also a video if you're watching today you're going to be watching you're trying to answer that question what do i need to do is my first step there's some things there that I think could help you really simply. And, and Carm, thanks again for pulling the industry together, helping people who, who built their businesses from the ground up with virtually nothing to be in a position now where they're considering being able to sell and realize that value. Guys, I worry because, you know, I get a call from a friend, sell my business. And when we had coffee, I realized that he wasn't close to being ever prepared or not even knowing what's around the next corner. That concerns me. We have invested our you know, hard sweat, blood, and tears into our businesses, and now we're wondering, what do we do with it now? Bob, you nailed it just about four minutes ago when you said every time you do a hiring, you, know, you hire, you do an interview, that perpetual question, you know, what do you, what do you want to do when you grow, what do you want to be when you grow up kind of thing is, is something that needs to be asked. Now you hire someone who has aspirations to own a business, there's a candidate. And then, you know, another year down the road, you make an important hire. You ask the same question because you can't, you know, who knows if this other person's really going to make it or not. And you, you continue to bring in that kind of talent. I have seen a, a shop owner that actually created two of the people as the successor candidates and, and built a partnership out of two that were internal start today oh yeah start today that's the message thanks guys uh, have a great weekend and thanks for everyone who's hanging out with us thank you bye everybody thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast until next time 